Well, good afternoon. I'm Major General Rich Neely, the Adjutant General for Illinois and the Commander of the Illinois National Guard. Welcome to Historic Camp Lincoln, the headquarters of the Illinois National Guard. First, I'd like to recognize our distinguished guests behind me, and I will present them today in their speaking order. Please hold your applause until the end. The Governor of the State of Illinois, J.B. Pritzker, Lieutenant Governor for Illinois, Juliana Stratton, the Director for Veterans Affairs, Mr. Terry Prince, Senator Christopher Belt, Representative Latoya Greenwood, Representative Joyce Mason, Senator Mike Hastings, Representative Mark Walker, Representative Dave Villa, and our special guest, Mrs. Sammy Anderson, with her husband, or one of our wounded warriors from the Illinois National Guard, Mr. Garrett Anderson. Let's give them all a round of applause. I'm so honored to take part in this historic day and witness the Governor Prisker's signing of the landmark bills into law here at Camp Lincoln. I have also had the privilege today of introducing my boss, Governor Prisker. Governor Prisker has been a steadfast advocate for the military and veterans. He's used his position as governor to advocate publicly, as he did just recently, to encourage Congress to reimburse the National Guard for their missions in the capital, uh, mission for the National Capital Region. He's also worked diligently to obtain full funding for the Veterans Home in Chicago, facilitated a full review of the state's current Veterans Homes, and helped create the Veterans Service Related Ailments Task Force to review service related injuries that had not had yet been identified by the federal government. He and Lieutenant Governor Stratton have worked to improve and enhance the military's footprint in Illinois through the Military Economic Development Council. And he has been a steadfast supporter of those service members who call Illinois home. When Governor Pritzker appointed me just about two and a half years ago, I don't think either one of us foresaw this, the support the Illinois National Guard would be providing during this period of time, especially as it relates to the pandemic. But throughout our relationship, the governor has always asked, what can I do to help? And help he has, in little ways like making phone calls, sending letters, we're showing up for a redeployment ceremony for our troops, and in big ways, big ways like today, where he'll be signing these bills into law. Today we'll see some of the important work the state legislature and the governor and Governor Pritzker have done on the behalf of service members, members and veterans. I'm so proud of the governor to choose historic Camp Lincoln for the signing of today's bills. While these bills address separate issues for our service members and veterans in different ways, they all ensure our troops and our veterans have the dignity and the respect they deserve. Without further delay, I'd like to present the 43rd Governor of the great state of Illinois, the Commander-in-Chief of the Illinois National Guard, Governor J.B. Pritzker. Well, thank you very much, Major General Rich Neely. Uh, I have to say the general has been such an amazing leader for our National Guard, truly somebody that uh, a governor can rely upon in the most turbulent of times. Remember, it's been our National Guard who have stepped up during this COVID-19 crisis to help deliver vaccine shots to everyone, everywhere, all across the state of Illinois. And I'm just so honored to have our National Guard, truly one of the best in the nation, uh, as also on the front lines of fighting this COVID-19 pandemic, not to mention that so many other things they do for us as servicemen and women. Today is a very special day over at the state fairgrounds. Today is Veterans and Gold Star Families Day. This morning, we honored Gold Star Families, and it was um, 
especially important uh, that we recognize the men and women, the fighting men and women who lost their lives and their families. I was also uplifted uh, later, just after noon today, by the stories of veterans who have contributed to the agricultural success of our great state, reminding us of the tenacity and the ingenuity that they share with all of our farmers. Our veteran farmers are some of the greatest people in our state, and I was glad to be there to honor them. Providing free admission to the state fair to veterans, service members, and their families is a quintessential fair tradition, but our gratitude to our military must also reverberate in our policies. Our military men and women, our veterans and their families deserve our full support. As the son and grandson of Navy veterans, with a brother-in-law and cousins who've served in various branches of the military, I'm reminded frequently what an honor it is to belong to a military family. So I've carried out policies as governor to uplift our veterans and their families. Two years ago, I restarted the construction of the long-stalled Chicago Veterans Home. And last year, we celebrated its completion. It's Illinois' fifth veterans home and the first in the Chicago area ever. And we are underway with the planning and engineering of a new modernized and state-of-the-art veterans home a uh, residential facility in Quincy, Illinois. Working with the General Assembly, tuition is free for veterans at every in-state public educational institution. We also made it easier for our military personnel transitioning back to civilian life to get the credits and certifications that will get them better jobs when they re-enter the civilian workforce. As our world continues to evolve, so must we honor our commitment to ensuring that our heroes and their loved ones can live with dignity and security, regardless of their ability, identity, or rank. This includes adapting to new economic challenges, ensuring equity, and finding new ways to honor our fallen. Today, I'm very proud to improve how we serve our active military members, our veterans, and their families by signing seven, seven bills that address overlooked challenges that they face during and after their service. To the elected officials on both sides of the aisle who have joined us today, thank you for being champions on behalf of our active duty men and women and our veterans. I also want to recognize the many voices who helped shape the milestone laws that I will sign today, including Sergeant Garrett Anderson and Sammy Anderson, who you'll hear from a little later today. And, or, in the program, and of course the Chez Veterans Center at UIUC. I also want to recognize Mike Ziri of Equality Illinois, John Murray and Andrew Tangen from Lake County Veterans Assistance Commission, and Deborah Whitaker. First, many military families face obstacles in transferring their professional licenses when moving between states and bases. In communities such as St. Clair County, where the largest employer is Scott Air Force Base, qualified service members and their spouses have been kept from employment while waiting for their paperwork. My administration has already made changes to expedite this process, but this bill, we take, uh, we take it one step further with this bill, requiring licenses to be expedited within 30 days of application, thereby removing one more barrier to success for military families in our state. Second, caring for the veterans of our state requires us to stand up for these dedicated individuals who've been marginalized and historically ignored. From World War II until as recently as the end of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, members of the military could have received a less than honorable discharge based upon their sexual identity and gender identity. 
it's time that Illinois stood up for our LGBTQ service members. Our state will henceforth recognize as honorable any negative military discharge based on sexual or gender orientation, an overdue amendment for so many. Additionally, thanks to the leadership of our Attorney General, Kwame Raoul, we are strengthening our consumer protections to guard military members and veterans against deceptive benefit providers. We must also honor the sacrifice of our fallen service members and Gold Star families, regardless of their branch or rank. For many, the presentation of the U.S. flag to the next of kin is an extraordinarily meaningful acknowledgement of their service to our state and to our nation. Starting today, family members of the Illinois National Guard will be presented with a state flag if their service member dies on active duty or in training, properly memorializing their service in Illinois. Illinois will also recognize all personnel listed as POW or MIA by raising their flag in every one of our state parks, ensuring their sacrifice is never forgotten. Thus, Illinois will now celebrate, uh, uh, importantly, we need to recognize and appreciate uh, the service that so many people give after they have served in our military. And so Illinois will now celebrate Veterans Gardening Day every first Saturday in May. On this day, Illinoisans will be encouraged to garden in honor of our state's veterans, planting the seeds of remembrance and respect in all of our communities. The Department of Veterans Affairs will also be reintroducing a special Folds of Honor license plate decal. The proceeds of these decals will go towards the Folds of Honor Foundation Fund, which provides educational scholarships to military families. When my father and my grandfather served as naval officers, the challenges they faced were very different than the ones our service members face today. However, one truth will always persist. It is our responsibility to serve our heroes as they have served us. So today we have taken seven more steps to live up to their legacy. I want to thank all of you for joining us today. And with that, I want to turn it over to truly a great public servant and my partner in governance of the state, Lieutenant Governor Juliana Stratton. Good afternoon. Thank you, Governor Pritzker, for your kind introduction and for your steadfast support of our veterans, military personnel and their families, and of course, our Gold Star families. It's an honor to be here today at Camp Lincoln for today's bill signing on none other than Veterans Day at the Illinois State Fair. My father, Henry, is a Navy veteran, and I want to begin my remarks by expressing immense gratitude to all of our veterans and military personnel. Thank you for your service and your sacrifice. I especially want to acknowledge the powerful way that our military answered the call during this pandemic. As Governor Pritzker mentioned, here in Illinois, 1,500 members of the Illinois National Guard were assigned to COVID-19 operations all across the state uh, and were responsible for administering more than 650,000 doses of the vaccine. So their actions uh, and your leadership, General Neely, saved lives. And for that, the people of Illinois are forever grateful. We all know how important it is to express gratitude to those who have bravely served our country, yet sheer gratitude is not enough. We must institute policies that give every member of our military, our veterans, and their families the support, honor, and opportunities that they deserve. And that's what today is really all about. Today, as the governor signs these seven bills into law, it's just another example of our state's commitment to the people who sacrifice so much so that we can enjoy our freedom. We want each of you to know that the people of Illinois will never forget your service, and today we reaffirm our support. I also want to give a special recognition to the spouses, partners, 
and children of our veterans. We know that when they stepped up to serve, so did you. And it was not always easy, especially when you had to spend time away from your loved ones during active duty or as you moved from place to place. So as we honor our veterans, these bills are also a way to honor you. Thank you, Governor, for signing these bills into law. And thank you to the members of the Illinois General Assembly for your dedication and your partnership. Uh, in the interest of time, I won't mention everyone by name since you've already been acknowledged by Governor Pritzker, but I'll just say thank you again and congratulations on getting this done. And to all of the agency heads, Acting Director Prince and all of this, his team and the staff, advocates and special guests that are joining us today, we appreciate you. Thank you all for doing your part to uplift our military, veterans, and their families. It is now my honor to introduce the Acting Director of the Illinois Department of Veteran Affairs, Terry Prince, who not only brings a legacy of dedicated military service, but who is also a wonderful example in his leadership and compassion in caring for our veterans and their families. Director Prince. Good afternoon, everyone. I'll try to keep my remarks brief, uh, but I am so excited to be here uh, during Illinois State Fairs Veterans Day with our governor, our legislators, and supporters who's conceptualized, crafted, passed, and will soon sign, and soon sign meaningful legislation to support Illinois 650,000 veterans and their families. Today, we will take action to make the lives of those who served by better, by enhancing services and breaking down roadblocks as we honor them in new and thoughtful ways. I came back to Illinois about five months ago and have traveled throughout the state to all of our veterans' homes, our veteran support offices, and work with our IDV employees who are wholly dedicated to the veterans of this state. I see where we're excelling and I see where we need to improve and have dedicated myself and the team to implementing sweeping changes to improve the lives of veterans and their families through our six-point plan for the future of IDVA. I've brought in new and talented professionals who are the best in their business to lead this team. We're continuously connecting with our homes and our VSOs so they can better know what we're doing and listening to them so we can get their ideas for how we can do things even better and we will ensure that we give them the tools and support they need to do just that. We're also engaging at a much better level with our community partners, including two of my good friends who were mentioned earlier from the Lake County VAC, who have been instrumental in the success of the veterans in the state and have been quite helpful in my transition into this role. And I appreciate you both for that very thing. Today, we recognize the great work before, performed on behalf of Illinois' dedicated veterans and their families. And our vision at DVA is to ensure Illinois is the destination of choice for veterans or for people leaving the military. We achieve this by ensuring that our services are centered around the veteran and their family to ensure that they can thrive in our great state. For our efforts are a true expression of our undying gratitude for their service to America. I'm honored to be here, Governor Pritzker. Thank you for the opportunity to lead this team. And it's now my privilege to introduce Senator Belt. Senator. Good afternoon. First and foremost, I would like to thank our governor, Governor Pritzker, for signing these seven bills. Uh, into law today. These seven bills collectively and individually they pay homage and honor our service members. So thank you, Governor, for signing these bills. Real quickly, uh, I want to tell the inspiration and I want to tell the story behind Senate Bill 2089, which uh, would in, in, uh, entail the flags of the state of Illinois, the state of, I mean, the country, America flag and uh, the POW MIA flag to be flown in state parks. About a year ago, I was walking in the park 
trying to deal with the weight that I, I picked up from COVID. And I was behind an uh, elderly gentleman with his young grandson. As they approached the, the, the three flags, the, the three-year-old, he couldn't have been any more than three or four years old. He pointed at the flags and he said to his grandfather, he said, Paul, Paul, what are those flags? The grandfather looked at the three flags and he pointed to the American flag, which was farthest to the left. He said, son, this flag represents the greatest country in the world. He skipped the middle flag, which was the POWMIA flag, and went to the third flag, the farthest on the right, which was the Illinois flag. He said, son, this flag represents the greatest state in the country. Then he went to the middle flag. He said, now, son, this flag, this POWMIA flag, is the reason these other two flags are the greatest. He said that th this flag represents those who gave the ultimate sacrifice so that America can be the greatest country in the world and Illinois can be the greatest state in the country. At the conclusion of his ex explanation to, to his grandson, the, 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 the young man said, wow. And I was standing probably 20, 25 <laughs> Uh, feet behind, and I said, wow, to myself. And I had a serendipitous moment right then and there because I knew at that moment that I had a proposal to put forth for legislation. Again, Senate Bill 2089 allows that the, those three flags, the American flag, the POW, MIA flag, and the state of Illinois flag will be flown in every state park in this state. Two things to this, and then I will take a seat. First thing is that it's, uh, it allows, because we did not want to put an undue burden on the Illinois Department of Natural Resources. And while I'm speaking of that, let me give a special shout out to the IDNR. They worked hand in hand with me on, on crafting this bill. It allows up to five years for those flags to be in the park, in, in, in all parks. In addition, it also allows for special, uh, for donations to be made for the flags through special foundations. So you military organizations or civic organizations, they can reach out to the El Illinois Department of Natural Resources and they can donate the flags to help defray from the cost. The other thing that it does, again, is uh, gives you five years to get it done. And again, this is uh, something that I'm looking forward to because you never know when someone in a state park will be walking in that same situation and they ask their granddad or, or their grandmother or their uncle what are those three flags for? And I'll leave it as I started with the words of the grandfather. The American flag represents the greatest country in the world. The Illinois flag represents the greatest state in the country. And the POW MIA flag is the reason those two are, are the greatest. Next, I will bring up Representative Latoya Greenwood. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to uh, Lieutenant Governor Stratton and Governor Pritzker. It is an honor to stand alongside both of you today, along with my colleagues and other distinguished guests. The honorable service men and women of our great state put their lives and livelihoods on the line every single day to protect our freedoms. As the chief sponsor of House Bill 2776, I am proud to stand before you today as Governor Pritzker signs this pro-military bill into law. This legislation breaks down barriers for active duty service members and their spouses by establishing a pathway to professional licensure 
in Illinois if an individual has received equivalent licensing in another state. The passage and signing of House Bill 2776 into law symbolizes what can be done when we prioritize the professional interests of our service men and women as we strive to make Illinois a more welcoming place to live. I would also like to thank my partners in crafting this legislation and that is Kimberly Huth, who is the Director of Military Affairs for St. Clair County, as well as our St. Clair County Chairman, Mark Kern, along with many members of Scott Air Force Base in helping craft this piece of legislation. On behalf of my colleagues and myself, before you here today, I thank you for your service and dedication. We hear you, we see you, and we are here to protect, uphold, and represent your best interest in everything that we do. Thank you. And I have the honor of bringing up Representative Joyce Mason. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm State Representative Joyce Mason, proudly serving Illinois' 61st District. I want to thank Governor Pritzker, Lieutenant Governor Stratton, Major General Neely, Illinois Department of Veteran Affairs uh, Acting Director Terry Prince. I'd like to welcome John Murray and Andrew Tangen of the Lake County Veterans Assistance Commission and thank them for all of their hard work that went into this legislation. I'm so grateful. I'd like to thank Mike Ziri of Equality Illinois for being here. And I'd like to thank my fellow legislators for passing a truly inspiring array of bills that will support, honor, and lift up our military families, our veterans. As the daughter of an Army veteran, I'm personally grateful for all that we've accomplished together. I'd also like to thank Senator Cullerton, who can't be here today, for passing this bill out of the Senate, as well as Vet Veterans Affairs House Committee Chair Stephanie Kifowit. And finally, some other folks who couldn't be here, Martin Parsons of the Southern Illinois University Veterans Legal Assistance Program, Ben Sauceda, President of the Chicago Chapter of American Veterans for Equal Rights, Elizabeth Ricks, Legal Director and Staff Attorney for Trans Life Care Program, and New York Assembly Member Dee Dee Barrett and her staff. They paved the way for legislation like this, um, and they were so supportive in sharing information about their journey with us. And finally, Maggie Roche and Hannah Otten in my office who worked tireless, tirelessly on this bill. And I'd like to thank the service members and veterans and Gold Star families who are here today for their service and sacrifice. I'm so grateful. Today with House Bill 1290, the brave men and women who serve in our military can do so without hiding who they are or who they love. Sadly, that's not always been the case. Until September of 2011, members of our military who were serving our nation honorably found their service cut short with other than honorable discharges due only to their sexual orientation or gender identity. They were stripped of the honor, dignity, benefits, and services that we owed to them. While these discriminatory practices were ended one decade ago by President Barack Obama, the veterans that received these other than honorable discharges continue to suffer the effects. Today, the state of Illinois changes all of that with House Bill 1290. Today, Illinois wants veterans to know that we value them, that we're grateful for their service, and today, 
we restore the benefits, services, and honor to these Illinois veterans with our gratitude. Thank you again to Governor Pritzker for signing this important legislation, for your support, and for always being a champion of equality, veterans, and the families of Illinois. And now I'd like to introduce Senator Hastings. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative Mason. I just want to say good afternoon to everybody. Um, I want to say thank you to Governor Pritzker, Lieutenant Governor uh, Stratton, to General Neely and his, and his wife. Um, I want to say a special thanks to you. Um, you set up a mass vaccination center at the Tinley Park Convention Center, and you helped turn the tide against an invisible enemy that is COVID-19. And uh, our community is forever grateful to you, General, and to the National Guard. We want to say thank you very much to Mrs. Neely for your sacrifice uh, for our state. Um, I also want to say thank you very much to my family who's here today. Um, I got my little guy, Mikey, Maddie, my nephew, Kyle, Bree, Mags, my brother, Kyle, Katie, and Kevin, and Donnie and Molly. Um, we come from a military family. Um, my brothers and I served. Um, my brother served in Korea. I served 10 years in the Army. I've been to Iraq, to the borders of Iran, and to Syria. Um, and now I can say I've been to Springfield. So... Um, <laughs> When I first came home from the service and I decided to run for public office, um, we always talked about continuing the mission at home and helping your brothers and sisters who served in arms. Not only have we expanded benefits, whether that's the Illinois Veterans Grants, whether that's constructing the Chicago Veterans Home, whether that's cleaning up messes across the state and other um, vet veterans issues that we've had across. Illinois, when I first came home, was a very good state to live in if you're a veteran. We've changed that. We've changed it to be a great state to be a veteran. These seven bills that the governor is about to sign today, I'm going to tell you that it not only makes Illinois a better place to live, but something to be proud of across the country. There's a lot of other states that take pride in their veterans' benefits that they give to their veterans. Illinois is the best veteran benefit state in the entire country. And I want to say thanks to the governor for signing these bills today. My bill, Senate Bill 505, will provide an Illinois state flag and the American flag to next of kin of active duty service members in the National Guard um, to get that by law. And uh, that's the right thing to do. All these other pieces of legislation are just phenomenal pieces of legislation that I'm proud to sponsor. And I'm very happy that all these pieces of legislation are voted on in a bipartisan manner. Veterans issues isn't a one party issue. It's a, it's a together issue. And that's why I'm proud to serve here in this General Assembly because everyone can get behind pieces of legislation like that. God bless you. God bless all of our service members across the state of Illinois, and thank you very much for your time. And to my little guy over there who's telling me thumbs up, um, buddy, I look forward to all the great things that you and our little guys and our family have to offer our country. Thanks again, guys. And that's the second time of the second bill signing. I forgot to do that, but I want to represent uh, my colleague and uh, committeeman, Representative Walker. Well, that's a very nice, uh, nice speech, nice introduction. I'm glad a fellow veteran preceded me. Um, I've talked to a lot of veterans in my career. I, I came back from Vietnam myself and was a veterans advocate. It's how I got involved in politics. The, I'd like to thank um, a Sergeant 11 Bravo in a recon unit, which is the sharp tip of the spear for the entire armed services. I'd like to thank you and applaud for you and thank you helping to fold people back into our education system and, and careers. Thanks very much, Sergeant Anderson. I, I, uh, I've never heard a soldier say, I like to be called a hero. I've never heard that. They generally say, I did my job. I didn't know what the hell to do and I did what my training said. I was lucky. If you want to thank anyone, thank those people we left behind. And um, I believe that too. I think that states the reality. So what can we do? Um, of course we're going to think people are heroes. We, we're going to respect them. We're going to admire them. We're going to try and be more like them. But what is it we're, we're more like, we want to be more like? We want to be like, at least I do, 
when we step forward and take the oath to protect the United States and the Constitution of the United States, which many of the people in this room have done, if we take that oath seriously and persist with it and remember it, even when we're suffering through heat and cold and mud and, and everything else, or standing on our feet for six hours giving vaccinations or passing out food or loading sandbags down on the Wabash, the people that do that are doing it to serve others and they're staying true to their oath. Everyone in camos here, everyone that's ever served, they deserve our admiration and respect for that. As to the bill, the bill that I carried was the bill that the governor mentioned that, that has to do with protecting veterans from fraudulent um, benefits for um, sellers. They're basically protecting them from um, organizations that sell for a profit what they could get for free from the state or the county or the feds. A good idea. I saw it, I said, that's a great idea, I'll carry it. Well, let, let the credit go where credit is due. And the reverse of a lot of bills, that bill came from the governor's office and I was asked to carry it. That's where that good idea came from and it's a brilliant idea. And, or probably from someone that talks to someone that, you know, it's just too good an idea to pass up. I'm glad it's passing. I want the governor to get credit for it. And I'm uh, very glad to see all of you here. Thanks very much. Yeah, we Army guys can't remember that stuff. Um, Dave Vella, who is the representative from the, the really rising economic engine of Illinois, Rockford, is next. Thank you for that, Mark. Um, thank you all for coming. I'm just, I'm honored to be here. This is my first bill signing. I'm just extremely excited. I also wanted to say a special thank you to any of the National Guard members who are here. Uh, my father was in the National Guard. I, my first real contact with the National Guard, I was going to college in Rock Island back in 93. Uh, I saw what happened with the Great Flood of 93. I saw the National Guard come out. It was a dirty job. They came down, did it professionally, and, and saved a lot of people's lives, saved a lot of businesses. I was very, very impressed with the National Guard. Operation Wave Rider, I think is what it was called, um, really showed to me the National Guard was not only a, a great organization, but was great for our state. So I wanted to do what I could. So most recently, I've had a chance to see, uh, in, at least in Rockford, in the Rockford area, uh, one of the vaccination sites set up. Uh, it's amazing. It, it served a lot of uh, under, underserved areas of Rockford and got a lot of people vaccinated who, who would not have gotten vaccinated. But obviously, we, there's a lot more work to be done. We still need to push and try it for 100% if we can um, so that we can just hopefully beat this back at some point. Um, those are only two examples. There's a lot of more examples that I could point to. I've had a chance now preparing for this just to kind of read over the history of the Illinois National Guard. And it's just amazing what they've done in all the different wars and all the different natural disasters. They're always there for us. Um, they're an example of selflessness, selflessness and courage that I, that I knew I wanted to honor. So uh, when I saw a, a, senator, um, a senator's bill come through, Senate Bill 505, I knew, uh, I did a little research. Uh, the, the tradition of giving fallen uh, soldiers a flag uh, was uh, to recognize uh, their honor that they, to honor what they have done and to show these brave soldiers and their families that we care about them and that we do not forget them. So we have a, give them a symbol. I did not realize that Illinois did not give a flag until I saw this bill come through. So Senator, thank you. Uh, I'm honored to put my name to this bill. I'm just so honored to be here with the governor and lieutenant governor to watch it be signed. So thank you all very much for having me here. Now I am pleased to introduce Sam Anderson who's doing some, some great work. Thank you. Today, our Governor Pritzker joins Senator Scott Bennett and Representative Mike Marin in recognizing our most unofficial members of the military, the service members' children. Folds of Honor each year provides an educational scholarship to the children of service members who were either killed or severely injured during war 
Today, Illinoisans are now invited to join the Folds of Honor mission by selecting a license plate decal. The mission that you will be joining is honoring their sacrifice by educating their legacy. So it's my absolute honor to invite Governor Pritzker up here to make it official for our military families and sign all of these wonderful bills into law today. Thank you. Terrific. Okay, before we hand out the uh, pens, I'll ask everybody to take a seat again, and we'll take questions from members of the media and, of course, sponsors of the various bills. I'm sure will be happy to answer any specific questions if I don't have the answers. Are you guys playing rock, paper, scissors for who's going to go first? Well, thank you for asking that question because we, we certainly want all of the men and women who work in our veterans homes to get vaccinated. Uh, it's the best way to protect yourself, your family, your community, as well as the veterans that you're caring for in our veterans homes. And so I want to encourage people to do it on their own. As you know, uh, we also are requiring them by October 4th uh, to get vaccinated. That's, you know, we're working with the uh, veterans home uh, union members and their representatives uh, to make sure that we make it as easy as possible for them. And people that have questions about their vaccines should 
certainly learn more, talk to their doctor. Uh, it's easy to get educated about them, but I'll just say to everybody that these vaccines are safe. The hundreds and hundreds of millions of uh, vaccinations that have been given out across the world, not to mention the 150 million that have been given in the United States uh, are some evidence to everybody that these are safe. We know that there are very, very few instances of people, people having uh, difficult reactions to the vaccine. But once again, if you feel like you might, you should go talk to your doctor and get the facts. Well, that's a good question. I don't know. Uh, the truth is that uh, masks and vaccines are, as we know, the best ways to keep yourself safe, to keep your family safe. Uh, we've learned early on in the pandemic, and we put a mask mandate in, as you know, May 1st of 2020 in order to slow the spread, to bend the curve, to make sure that we were going to lower the number of infections in the state. And guess what? Masks have worked over and over and over again. Masks have proven to work. So for those who are as yet unvaccinated, please wear a mask. Anybody who's been vaccinated going into a large crowd, I encourage you to wear a mask. And of course, people who are in schools, it's vitally important that we keep our children safe from this Delta variant, which has had a terrible effect on younger people like nothing else before during this pandemic. Well, there's a, a minority of folks out there who want to make masks a political issue. They're not. This is just about keeping yourself healthy, keeping your community healthy, keeping your school healthy. Sure, happy to respond in this way. Um, first of all, I'm a, as you know, I'm a Democrat. I support Democrats across the state of Illinois and up and down the ticket and will continue to do so. Uh, and have been a supporter of the uh, Illinois Democratic County Chairs Association. In fact, I intend to provide a video for the event that's happening on Wednesday, uh, which I cannot attend. Uh, and also uh, have a, a huge supporter of not only the leader of the IDCCA, but also of the Democratic Party of Illinois. So I hope that answers any questions that you or anybody else may have. Well, that I've been a supporter of veterans for my entire life, in fact. As I mentioned earlier, my father and my grandfather, both naval officers, I have an enormous amount of respect for our heroes, not just in the state of Illinois, but across the nation. Uh, and I'll continue, as I do today, to support veterans in every way that I can uh, to respond at least to uh, what some of the uh, politicians want to say here's what I would tell you. This has been an awful pandemic. This pandemic has taken the lives of too many people, especially our seniors, our elderly, and in congregate settings, worst of all. And uh, as soon as we saw that there was a problem, uh, we sent in all the right people to evaluate uh, what was going on, how we could get better at uh, keeping our veterans safe. Uh, and uh, made sure that we had an independent investigation done at the veterans home so that we would know not only what went wrong, but how we can fix it for everybody going forward. And then, as you know, we held people accountable by 
firing a number of people who may not have done their job properly. And then we hired one of the best in the country to lead our Veterans Affairs Department, and he's done a terrific job in the time that he's been here, only five months on the job, and things have vastly improved, and I'm very proud of the work that we're doing. Thank you, everyone.